Hey everyone, Chris here. So today we're going to finish up the uh, transform uh, CPP file. So let's uh, jump right in. So where we left left off is uh, we had uh, finished setting up the uh, some of the uh, functions, uh, mainly set rotation, get rotation, rotate, and the rotate around X, Y, and Z. Uh, and now we're going to get in and finish the rest of the stuff. So we're going to start by uh, getting uh, returning uh, the uh, coordinate frame, so the right up and direction. So that's the first step here. Oops, not M direction there. I'm right, and I'm terrible time typing. Let's just fix that properly. All right, there we go. And then we're going to return this up or M up I guess and then return this M direction now we're going to return the position of the object And in this one here, get world position, we're going to have a little bit of recursive and return the uh, the world position of the object and not just relative to its parent. And for this is its M game object. So we check if the M game object dot M parent is not equal to null. And if it's not, we return this M game object. I'm just gonna copy this over. I don't really like Visual Studio IntelliSense. I don't really like IntelliSense actually. I find it actually autocomplete stuff when I don't want it to autocomplete stuff when I'm typing things out. That's annoying. I need to turn it off or tinker with it. So it's going to be return this m game object m parent m transform get world position. Plus this get position. And if it isn't, oh, uh, if there isn't a parent, we're just going to return this get position all right now let's go on now to where we're setting uh, the position so we're gonna have a bunch of the same code here and as I mentioned earlier where we, we return the transform so that you can uh, chain uh, setting values in say an initializer when you're initializing all the values you can just chain them all together uh, which will make your code nicer really uh, so for here this one is simple we just set this position M position sorry and that's going to be equal to L position that we passed in the equal sign there and so now for the translate functions it's going to be this M position and since vectors can just add floats we can do plus equals L translation for that uh, same as vectors can add vector threes so we can just do that as well for that. So it's nice that having those overloaded operators makes a lot of these functions a lot simpler in writing because it's handled all in one place in the vector class. And then for the uh, translate uh, with the three floats, instead of doing L translate, we actually just do vector three 
and just pass in x, y, and z rather than adding the values individually, and we let the vector 3 handle its own formatting. Now for the get scale, uh, first one we're going to do is just return m scale, then scale x, y, and z is where we're going to turn m scale. We're going to return 0 for the x, 4 for the y, and 8 for the z. And so if you look at a matrix, uh, 0 is the first position, 4, 4 is the position in the center of the matrix, and 8 is the last position in the matrix when you go across each row instead of going down the columns. So for setting the scale, this actually, unfortunately, there isn't an easier way to do this. So for what we do here is we actually take our M scale, 0, and set it to L scale. And then we repeat that for position 4 and position 8. And so this is setting of a uniform scale. And then with the... Uh, L scale from a vector. We take L scale 0, L scale 1, and L scale 2. And that'll set up our scales for there. Setting scales off uh, three individual values is much the same except it's just X, Y, and Z. And that would be for if we want to have non-uniform scales. Same as with the vector, you can have non-uniform scales. As I mentioned, uh, this will support that. All right, so now if we want to uh, transform the scale. So we're just going to go up and we're going to grab this little piece of code here, copy it in, and this is just going to be plus equals scale. So this is if we want to increment the scale. So if we want to do like lerping, we can just scale the object by an amount rather than having to do uh, a more, uh, we basically we're abstracting uh, the scaling so that it's handled internally with transform so for the vector uh, one we just copy what we had for the vector and we just change it from equals to plus equals and we can do the same thing with the three float value scale and we're good there now we just have uh, the uh, local world MV and MVP matrices so we're just going to return those and so that's going to be return M local matrix turn this M world matrix return this M MV matrix and return this M underscore MVP matrix and so that's it for the transform class so I'm just gonna take a break here while I check time and then uh, we'll uh, see about moving on. Alright, and I'm back now. So uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, start laying out the structure for the scene graph. So we're just going to go and create a new class and call it scene graph. And just uh, that, everything's good. Create that, pop that up save it so we're going to start off and just writing our standard header stuff that's in every header and so the scene graph is actually this is uh, an older version of the scene graph here and we're going to come back and revisit this um, as I've been learning more about this, we're actually gonna the scene graph is gonna become 
responsible for updating all the transform components and we're going to break it up so that the component manager stores everything but doesn't actually update everything so it's only it's going to be left up the components are going to be left up to their respective managers to update so the scene graph will be the one that updates the transform components which is by far the most crucial component because without transform components you can't actually have anything displaying in your world at all like nothing will have a position everything would be at zero 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 so for here we're going to include a string as well as include game object and then we're going to add a few uh, type defs here and these type defs are the same stuff that we've had before for uh, manipulating uh, vectors so we actually need to include vector up here as well apparently don't have included but there it's now there so a standard vector that's going to be game object pointer We're just going to call it game object vector. Then we're going to type def, and this is going to be a game object vector iterator. And it's just going to be called game object vector itr. And then the last type def we'll have is going to be a game object const iterator. You know? Now we're uh, going to actually create this vector. This is going to be game object vector m children or m objects or whatever you want to call it. Uh, then we're going to have our constructor deconstructor there. We're going to have void destroy, and this will basically clean up the uh, scene graph then we're going to have void add game object and I'll take a game object pointer and void remove game object And this will take a game object pointer as well. And then we're going to have remove game object. And this will take a string. And so this one will actually only remove the first occurrence of a game object with that name. And then we'll have void remove all game objects and that'll be with any occurrence of this name then we're going to have game object find game object and it's going to take a name or a string rather And then we're going to have uh, a vector, a standard vector of game object. And this is going to be find all game objects by name. All right, so that's it for the uh, scene graph uh, header. Next time we'll come back and we'll uh, write the CPP file. So see you later.